on the Queens County School Board meeting for November the 3rd, 21. Uh, school board meeting. Can I have a motion to go into executive session? Yes, pursuant to general provisions, Article 3 305 and 3 104, I move for the board to meet in closed session to discuss the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, and removal, resignation, or performance evaluation of appointed employees over whom this public body has jurisdiction to consult with council and to perform an administrative function. A motion to have a second? Second. Second, any comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 We'll be we'll return back at six o'clock for our regular board meeting. Thank you. Welcome to Queen Anne's County Board of Education meeting for November the third. Can we please stand for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. We have our agenda in front of us. Do I have a motion? I'm so moved. Second. A second. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Motion approved. We've had a chance to look at our uh, minutes for October the 20th. Um, I make a motion to approve the work session minutes for October 20th, 2021. Second. Okay. Motion and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Our next is Energizer Bunny. given to a staff member or a volunteer who keeps on going. It is sponsored by Bayview Financial with Mr. Chip Brittingham and Mr. Wayne Humphreys. Thank you so much for being here. So our November Energizer Bunny is Miss Jean Cardwell. I'd ask her to come up and Mr. Matt Evans who sponsored um, this nomination if he would come up as well. award is being presented to Jean, who is an administrative secretary for the student services. Jean is the behind the scenes magician that keeps the office of student services running. The beginning of every school year is hectic and this year was certainly no exception. Regardless of the obstacles, Jean is diligent and works with all schools to ensure the student enrollment count is up to date and accurate by September 30th deadline. With all the other challenges this school year has brought, Jean coordinated the collection and screening of student records selected by the biannual MSDE funding audit that took place during the month of September, <laughs> the most hectic month. While coordinating these two major tasks, Jean continued to process and monitor home instruction, assist with school health and alternative education, provide requested transcripts to alumni and all of all ages, and process home hospital and out of area attendance zone requests, and entered and tracked data on our homeless and kinship families. Whew, it's a lot. <laughs> Jean's energy and dedication to the students and families of Queen Anne's County Public School is greatly appreciated and deserving of the Energizer Bunny. So congratulations. recognizes someone or group of people in our school system who shine. November shining stars for, are the Queen Anne's County Public School nursing staff. And I'm going to go through and name each one even though all of them are not present today this evening. So we'd like to recognize Julia, Teresa, Anne, Becky, Linda, Denise, Tracy, Jessica, Julie, Desiree, Tanya, Claire, Michelle, Sharon, and Jackie and Jackie because we have two Jackies. 
So I'd like to just recognize them as a whole group. This group of nurses has risen to the challenge of meeting the needs of our students and staff when they need them, when we need them the most. They have done countless assessments, checked dosages, administered medications, comforted the injured students, and reviewed and applied for COVID guidance through numerous updates during a school hours and beyond. They are stressed, but are successfully meeting the demands of the job. They are our shining stars. So if I can see something. I could have our new supervisor for health services, Mrs. Michelle Morset, come up and she will be able to present these certificates to our nurses. Julia. And Anne. Oh. Becky. Linda. And Denise, Jessica, no. Julie, Desiree, Tanya, and Claire, and Michelle. <laughs> And Sharon. Charlie mm -hmm. Brown. Jackie's new. Yeah. Jackie Brown. Me and I are like the kind of Jackie Brown. Both the same age. Like we're both on the same age. Yeah. Right. If we could give them another round of applause for amazing, amazing long hard hours. Okay. <laughs> I can tell with your eyes. One more. Thank you. Yay, nurses. So we make sure these get out. Yeah, um, carry up, take care of it. Thank you, ladies. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Next, our agenda is a uh, audit presentation, 5-01, Jane and... That's who it is. Good evening, Dr. Sands. Good evening, President Smith, board members. Tonight, like we like to bring before you our audit presentation for fiscal year 21. I have with me Ms. Audrey McKendrick with TGM Group, and she'll start us off. Good evening, thank you for having me. Um, I would like to first, I'm gonna just kind of go through this quickly, but on page three, probably the most important part of the report is the independent auditor's report. And if you look at page, five of that report, the next page after that, the auditor's opinion. The auditor's opinion, you have a unmodified opinion, which is the best opinion that can be given for financials. We found no issues. It's a clean opinion. Um, the next report in the packet in the financial statement is the independent audit, audit report on internal control um, over compliance. What page over, you want? I'm sorry. What page are you on? Uh, page six, sorry. It's the independent auditor's report on internal control over financial reporting and on compliance. We look at your internal control as part of designing our audit, designing our audit procedures. Um, we did not find any issues in the work that we performed in that area or in the area of compliance. If you'll turn to page, the next section is the MDNA, which is, Oh, sorry, thank you. Is prepared by um, management, and it just gives you a basic overview of the financial statements that should be easier to review than the detailed financial information. 
I will turn you to page 18, which is the first um, report in the financial statements. And that is the statement of net position. This is prepared on the full generally accepted accounting principle basis of accounting. So it includes all of your liabilities as well as your fixed assets. And you'll see that total assets for the year are approximately 175,000. Total liabilities are about 189,000. Those liabilities are influenced primarily by your pension liabilities and your other post-employment benefit liabilities. The next page, page 19, is the statement of activities, which again is on the full gap basis. And you'll see that um, total change in net position for the year is a deficit of about nine million. But again, that is influenced totally by an actuarial evaluation of your other post-employment benefits and pen pension benefits. So. The statement that follows that on page 20 is the governmental funds balance sheet. That is presented without the fixed assets and liabilities. It's on get, it's, it's a modified accrual basis. So it's not budgetary basis, which we'll get to. But you can see here, your total assets on this basis are about 24 million. And that's up about 6 million from the prior year, primarily in cash. Um, total liabilities are approximately 14 million. And those are up about one point six million from the prior year total fund balance at, on this report is up about 4.2 million from the prior year at approximately 9.6 million if you'll turn to page 22 which is the statement of revenues expenditures and change in fund balance this will show you on a generally accepted accounting principle basis modified that your total revenues for the year are approximately 119 million versus expenditures of about 115 million, giving you an excess of revenues over expenditures of about 3.3 million. Page 24 is the statement of fiduciary net position, and then the report that follows it is change in fiduciary net position. The only thing I'd like to point out here, your retiree health plan trust, this is where you're putting aside funds for those other post-employment benefits. You're on a pay-as-you-go basis, but this is where you're setting aside money for those. I will now skip through the notes to the financial statements. Nothing really changed this year, primarily. If you will turn to the only thing that did change that I want to draw your attention to on page 50, in note 13, the Government Audit Accounting Standards Board um, had set out a pronouncement that we had to look at any activities that were deemed fiduciary and determine should those really be fiduciary or does the board have administrative control over those. When we looked at those school activity funds in the past, which is the accounting that's going on at the schools and the funds at the school level were considered fiduciary activities and now they are actually included in your government statements that we just went through above. And then the final report on page 52 is kind of what I think what everybody's usually interested in, your schedule of revenues and expenditures and encumbrances budget to actual. So this will show you um, the budget amounts. There's an original and final column as well as actual. And it'll show you that total revenues, total revenues are very close to the budgeted amount of about 106 million was about 114,000 higher. And then with your expenditures, the budget was for approximately 106 million and expenditures actually came in a bit lower, quite a bit lower at 103 million. So that's where you're seeing your savings for the year of about $3 million where revenues exceeded expenditures based on the budget. If there's any questions on that or if Jane, if you would like to. Right, if, if we want to go back to page 20 and expand a little bit more on that, Mr. Kendrick. Sure. When we look at the fund balance of 9.5 million, of that restricted is 839,000. What is committed is 630. Assigned, and that would be to our POs, is 3 million. So the total unassigned there is a little over 4.9. It is. On that. And that is available to spend either in fiscal year 23 will be budgeted in or with a budgeted amendment to fiscal year 22. And then uh, when we take a look at page 52, we did see some positive variances in fiscal year 21. COVID had some 
very few um, positive impact and that would be in the sense that we didn't have the substitutes, we didn't have um, so, uh, Saturday school, we had savings in bus transportation as far as the fuel, we had savings in custodial supplies, water, heat, and uh, that's where we're coming up with the savings for this year on that. just take a minute to thank Jane and her staff. They helped us tremendously while we were out there and Dr. Salins, mm -hmm. you as well. It's always a pleasure working with you. Thank you. And this is a compliance audit to make sure that we're doing, and we're reporting certain categories to you and make sure they fall in those right areas. Is that correct? The, we, the compliance piece of the audit for the most part, if you're talking federal awards, there's another audit report that we're still working on now for compliance with federal awards. This is an audit based on generally accepted accounting principles. And as presented in the financials, everything is presented in terms of generally accepted accounting principles. When I look at our food service operations, which was a positive, but I know we got a lot of money from the federal government this year with all these programs. Have we been paid as of June the 30th all our federal money? Yes. So we're, we're nobody's in arrears? Correct. And uh, again, for this year, for 22, as you know, it is actually um, waived and free for all students as well. And we're seeing an um, increased participation in the food service program, as Sid could probably speak to as well. And most of that's being covered by the federal government? All of it is, yes, at a standard rate. Do we have any questions by board members? Not for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Audrey. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Okay, board involvement, 601. Tammy, you want to start off? Uh, yes, I just want to extend my uh, good luck to all of our high school fall sports teams as a uh, venture on into the states uh, to run for the state championships. Wish them well, good health, good sportsmanship. Let's see, not much to report. Um, I did talk to Dr. Salins and uh, what do we have, 10 slots, some junior ROTC slots that'll be coming up for next year, next right? Year. Right, that'll be going into our program of study, which we moved to publish around um, January and uh, students start to sign up at that point for classes for the next year. And so we have 10 slots that are awarded through um, a partnership with Talbot County Public Schools. Right, excellent. So I um, just wanted to put that out there and let everybody know in advance that uh, the program's gonna be gearing back up. And uh, that's about all I got. Yeah. Like it's been a late month. I did attend a May luncheon and a uh, meeting afterwards. Dr. Salins, I think, with Annapolis at the same time. Uh, had a privilege to it going down to Kent Island watching a girls' soccer game. Happened to be Kent, Kent Island and Queen Anne, so that was very interesting and very impressive with the facilities and everything. And that's about what I had. Um, Dr. Salins? Yes. Um, <clears throat> okay. So, um, I wanted to kind of unveil, as the board knows, because they approved the contract that we are working um, with Maven and Smith, um, who is a company that will be redesigning our websites and to uh, kick that website off, we um, needed to create a new branding. And so um, the branding was finalized and I just wanted to share that with the board. Um, you can see that it really does um, bring in both ends of the district um, as it relates to colors. And when we surveyed, um, Maven and Smith actually surveyed um, staff members and community members to say, what, what, what colors do you think of when you think of Queen Anne's County Public Schools or Queen Anne's County as a whole. And so we incorporated all those colors. And um, also they said the number one theme was really water. So we incorporated that. Um, we did partner with the county. They have just done their rebranding. Um, and, and their tagline is uh, where shore living begins. And our tagline is where our future begins. And so we're really excited to share that with, um, with you all and um, move forward with the the branding piece and um, unveiling a new website. Um, our target date is February 1st. So look forward to updating you um, as we move forward.
and other than that, I, I mean, um, just being very involved and in, um, made it to all the schools um, for my first kind of more formal visit. Um, so many amazing things going on. Um, honestly, uh, you know, almost as normal as can be when you walk into it and you see instruction going on and students engaged and um, teachers and staff members just excited to have students um, in their class and, and participating and uh, some really wonderful visits um, that we had a chance to go on. So um, I look forward to my next upcoming visits, but I'll have lots of opportunities to get into schools as it relates to other things. Um, the superintendent um, student advisory councils will be starting up this month. So I'm looking forward to getting into the secondary schools and meeting with students directly and being able to have some conversations and um, listen to what they have to say about things we can grow on and things we're doing really well on. So. Thank you, Lumer. You're finished, right? Um, yes, I'm done. Amy's Amy ready Hood, to go. Assistant yes. Superintendent Thank you. Um, good evening, Mr. Smith, Dr. Salins, and board members, and the rest of the executive team. Um, so what I have for you are the October spotlights from the schools. Um, so Bayside Elementary School, they took um, the students that participated in the summer reading and math and they treated them to ice cream and the students also received a certificate. Um, they have what they call Dolphin Dash Celebration Monthly, so they held it during that time frame. So there are some pictures there of the celebration. Centerville Elementary School is in receipt of a $6,500 grant, uh, kindness grant, and the things that they're um, anticipating doing with the funds, they're beautifying the school with a mural. Um, they are doing kindness positive referrals, and then each of the students will receive a t-shirt. Churchill Elementary School, um, they celebrated Fire Prevention Month. Churchill Volunteer Fire Company came to the school, so you can see pictures there with them working with the students. And Graysonville, they do what is called Dudes in School. And you see lots of pictures and they're all outside um, so they are interacting with the students before school after school um, these could be dads they could be uncles they could be grandfathers they could be just community members but it's a program that they have incorporated so the students have um, additional positive role models Kennard Elementary School participated in what they're calling, uh, or what is called, Caw to Action. Um, and it's sponsored by the, Ra the Baltimore Ravens and the United Way of Central Maryland. And this, the students chose to write letters and draw pictures to thank veterans uh, for their service, which I thought was um, a very nice um, way to give back to the community. And then you see pictures of them working on them. Island Elementary School. What you have here is a teacher that has created a student-centered environment on the left-hand side where she has music playing, um, you have uh, the students talking about art, um, so she has maximized that student-centered experience. And then on the right you have students doing buddy reading and their social distancing, I guess, and measuring it by <laughs> touching the soles of their shoes. Mattapique Elementary School, they have Squirtle the Turtle, um, and that's the Port of Baltimore Terrapin Program. So there's their Terrapin. And then you have the Queen Anne's County Education Partnership um, donating six wobble chairs for the students in um, classes. And then on October 15th, they are reporting that the teachers worked on tier two um, strategies and what they've done is um, created additional supports for their instructional toolbox. 
Sudlersville Elementary School, just um, as Churchill reported, they did um, an activity with the Sudlersville Volunteer um, Fire Company um, surrounding Fire Prevention Month. And um, they also um, have the students, the fourth graders, that participated in the um, fall assessments. So they recognized them. Centerville Middle School had a book fair from October 18th through the 22nd. Mattapique Middle, October, um, was principal, National Principals Month, so they are um, thanking all of the principals in the uh, district as well as their um, their own principal, um, Dr. McCoy. And then October 2nd was National Custodial Appreciation Day. And they're recognizing their staff that keeps their school shining. Stevensville Middle in, in our new middle school class, um, Music and Theater Arts. So you have a picture of students preparing for, and you might want to mark your calendar on November 13th at 2 o'clock. They're going to put on All Together Now. Southersville Middle, so on October 15th, they had a celebration of Hispanic Heritage Month. Um, this is where they had food, they had entertainment, and it all reflected the Hispanic culture. Um, the equity team, the PTSA, and the families within the Hispanic community planned the event. They had hundreds of homemade meals that were served at the festival. And um, a shout out to the Judy Center who provided resources to the early learners, as well as the Southersville Volunteer Fire Department who um, provided, that is, um, the lights for the event. Penn Island High School, um, the month of October, we had, both high schools had um, homecoming, so this was their spirit week, and the, how they celebrated it each day. And Queen Anne's um, hosted a successful homecoming. They had the parade, the game, the dance, and Queen Anne's County um, staff participated in a productive October 15th Professional Development Day. And on October 26th, the PTSA was administered to all sophomores. And you got to meet these wonderful people at the October 20th meeting and Mr. John Murdoch shared with everyone what they were doing. So here's some, um, some pictures of them giving those goodie bags that they had shared with us to the bus drivers. And then the box on the bottom gives you some data. So the number of students, we have 7,477. 6,063 of those students are transported by bus, 1,414 by car, and the number of buses that we have daily on the roads is 108. And that's our October spotlight. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. <laughs> Student board reports, um, Canal and Jackson. Uh, yeah, good evening, everyone. Good evening. So we're finally in the groove of everything at Ken Island. And as we said earlier, right now we're nearing the end of our fall sports season. So just to name a few examples, there's a playoff field hockey game against QA tonight, which is at home. Um, this Friday, there's a playoff football game against CM Wright, which is also at home, which everyone's very excited for as we're still undefeated. Uh, the sports orientation for our winter season is going to be tomorrow night. Um, we also had a school-wide PSAT testing day last week in addition to Queen Anne's. Uh, rehearsal has started for our spring production of The Little Mermaid. And lastly, throughout November, we're going to be having a Thanksgiving canned food drive through National Honor Society. And that's all I've got. Okay. Thank you. Queen Anne, we got Brent. 
Um, we have a lot of things going on through November, November in Queens County High School. One important item is the um, end of the quarter one. Our pull cards will be distributed electronically, electronic, electronically on the November fifth for the class of 2022. If you have any have, haven't already ordered your cap and gown, you should do so as soon as possible. You can do that online on www.jostens.com. There are around eight colleges that will be visiting Queens County High School in November. You can find that list of colleges and sign up if you were junior or senior who is interested in attending one Naviance. There are three universities that will be having a representative coming to Queens County High School to meet with students who are thinking about applying or have recently applied, and they will um, render an admissions decision that day. On November 17th, it's Stevenson University, November 18th, Salisbury University, and on November 19th, it's Capital University. Chesapeake College will be on the guidance, of, uh, guidance office on Friday, November 19th, to register juniors and, and seniors for spring semester classes. If you are interested, you need to meet with your counselor so prior to this date. On October 26th, we had the pre-SAT, and this Saturday, November 6th, Queens County High School will have the SAT testing day. ASVAB testing will take place for all juniors in their English third, three classes, third classes this semester on November 18th. This is used by the armed services and is an excellent tool to help match a student with their interest and aptitude. If you are a senior and you are interested in this, for this military purpose, you can sign up in guidance. The FBLA will be having an annual food drive competition. It will run from Monday, November 8th through Friday, November 12th. This activity helps stock shelves for our local food banks and support Queens County families. The Interact Club is sponsoring Operation Christmas Child. Students collect, can collect small toys and other items packaged in shoeboxes and send it to children around the world. This is an activity approved, approved service learning event. Um, the Queens County High School Theater Department is presenting a night of scenes from a midnight, a midsummer night stream on Saturday, November, 13, November 13th at 7 p.m. Tickets are free to the public, so please come support our students for a nice night of theater. On December 1st at 7 p.m., we will be having a winter concert at the high school, which will feature our band. A huge congratulations to marching band who have finished their competitive season on October 23rd. It was a tournament of bands, Region 9 championships. They, got, they gave the best Person of the season, which earned them in the first place in the finish in the Group 1 Open Class and the title of Regional Championships for that group class. They are also earned the first place for the music and visual. Additionally, they are earned awards for the best percussion and best color guard. And to, for sports, our unified tennis has gone to states on November 9th. The girls' soccer team are the Bayside Championships, I mean, well, are the Bayside Champions. And winter, sport, winter sports are starting Monday, November 15th. So you need to register for that. And we have our football game Friday against Stephen Decatur and cross country for regionals is tomorrow. Now here you're participating in that. Yeah. I'm so sorry. get home and get, get a lot of rest. I heard talking to Mark about it and good luck to you. Thank you. Good luck to you, yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. We have public comment. No. Read this. Okay, public comment. We ask that all speakers keep in mind the following guidelines. Speakers should sign the roster, including their telephone number and address. Comments should be limited to three minutes in length. Comments longer than three minutes should be submitted in writing. Questions or statements to the board should relate to a matter of general public policy over which this board has authority. Comments about actions or statements of individual staff members are not appropriate for public comment and should be referred to the superintendent of schools or the board president. If you have a specific question, the board will make sure an appropriate staff member responds to your question. The board respects your desire and right to convey your message freely, but asked as a courtesy to this board and our citizens to show respect for all. Okay, we have uh, Richard McNeil. State your name and address for the record. Did you get all that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's his first rodeo. Good evening. My name is Richard McNeil. I live in uh, White Marsh Road in Centerville, and I represent the re uh, retired school personnel group. And um, you know, I learned a long time ago that uh, as an educator, you're supposed to do a pretest before you do much of anything else. So I'm going to ask a question of the board, excluding these two. Um, do you know where Hope School is? Well, 
know, due to policy, we're not allowed to have interaction. Oh, okay. Well, anyway. <laughs> we thought she knew this, but. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> It's a rhetorical question then. Uh, Hope School, if you don't know, is uh, the, the school, one room schoolhouse that is sitting in front of Queen Anne's County High School. And uh, the reason I mentioned that tonight, uh, three years ago, uh, we got a grant of money to replace the door. And I want to thank uh, the carpentry students um, that Amy was in charge of at that time, sort of. Um, anyway, they built the door, uh, and it had to be built because it's of an odd size. You couldn't go down and order one. And so we got a grant of money, and the carpentry students under uh, Mr. Ron Frederick put it together. Well, the, the shutdown of the schools kind of put that on out of whack and so forth. But it was installed last week. And um, which is nice because the original door, the bottom uh, 18 inches had rotted away. Uh, so we've, we're happy to get that replaced. And I want to also thank uh, Bob Simba, a uh, local person. Uh, some of you might know he uh, actually helped take the old hinges and the old doorknobs off and finish those up and put them on the new door. So it still has some of the original uh, talents to it, if, the, if that's the thing. Uh, while I'm thanking everybody, I'm going to thank Nancy Cook. She is head of the uh, Historical Society, and she's been kind of behind this. So um, if you've not been in the Hope School, I encourage you to visit it. It has got a lot of old textbooks that go back to the late 1800s and 1900s, and uh, the desks and the bell and, uh, and everything in that. We will, we do have it open normally the first Saturday of the month from April through um, September. So I uh, just want to uh, mention that. Um, second thing I want to mention, and uh, I might need some help. I've got a couple pictures I want to show. Uh, I want to thank the superintendent for uh, joining our luncheon and meeting. Uh, we had our wonderful time, and one of the uh, activities that we had that we shared with the members of the uh, staff and uh, the, the uh, folks at uh, Corsica Hills, uh, you know, when you get an opportunity to bring a smile on somebody's face just because you've got some pumpkins that are decorated and, and, and colorful, um, it, was, it was just wonderful. Uh, this is not a slideshow, it's individual pictures, so it might take a little bit to go by. I apologize for the... She doesn't have them. It's got to wrap it up. Thank you. But anyway, I just wanted to highlight a few of those. Uh, you know, when you bring um, folks together who used to work in schools, uh, they became extremely creative. Uh, but we took uh, 27 pumpkins over there and uh, just had a wonderful time of, of bringing cheer to, to the folks there. And uh, so just like I said, I wanted to let you know that we still uh, support the community. Thank you. Our next meeting is December 14th. Thank you. At Prospect Bay. Yep. Thanks. Pardon me? At Prospect Bay. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Just on that note, Mr. Smith, uh, when we toured Queen Anne's County High School, that door was being worked on and we met the young men who were working on it. It's beautiful. It, was, I mean, it wasn't even finished back then. But I'm sure it's gorgeous now because they were really doing a great job on it. Okay, moving on. Uh, COVID-19 metrics update, Dr. Salins. Yes, um, Carrie's kind of doing dual. Oh, I can do dual. <laughs> <laughs> Keep her busy. <laughs> yes. So I think everyone knows because you do get a daily report, mm -hmm. but like for the public, the um, you can see that um, over the last um, several days from 1028 through yesterday, you can see that yeah. our numbers have been, thank you, sir. You can see that our numbers have been below the 20 mark. Um, I did want to point out that on previous updates, there was an error. Um, obviously, we pull it out and we show that it's 13.04 right now, and we had a percent sign next to that, and that wasn't accurately represented. Um, that was brought to our attention. We quickly fixed that. That was just a, a type, typo, basically, but it, it means something very different. <laughs> so 13.04 per 100,000 as opposed to the percentage. So I just want to make sure that the board understands that there was a slight change on this slide and that the previous one um, may have been misleading or misrepresenting and um, that was an error because of the percent sign so removing that but things are looking good um, met with
with all the administrators and supervisors on Friday, had a really good discussion. Um, we're gonna start bringing in character counts coaches now. We've really um, been partnering with them. We've opened it up here at the central office. I've encouraged um, people to, you know, that work here to get involved, especially around this local area, giving them permission to leave work to go and be a character counts coach. And I think that they've been able to get a really great additional team there. Um, also, I know that they've done some training with some of our high school um, honor society students to be able to provide um, that service as well. They, they do a wonderful job. Their message is amazing. So we're excited to bring them back in. Um, we do have DARE going on. So we're starting to open up a little bit more and these numbers help us to do that. So I'm, I'm very optimistic that we can continue to um, invite more and more people um, back into our schools. And I think we also have not loosened, but changed our, a little bit of what we're doing with uh, restricting students at their close contact that you're working on. I think yes. I the numbers were pretty low with, yes. with the contact rates and so we did change our quarantining um, so whether the student as long as a student is masked and not symptomatic they don't have to quarantine um, so the only times that we're seeing quarantining right now are students obviously who are symptomatic and students who may have been exposed during times where you don't have a mask on such as lunch where not all of our schools can socially distance during lunch um, so some of the the quarantining is coming from that um, it has has greatly impacted um, you know the quarantine number Numbers and uh, I think and we're doing fine with it and so we're going to continue to monitor that and if we can modify that even more we will continue to look at it and do so but um, I'm, I was glad that we were able to move in that direction and, and as you can see it hasn't impacted our numbers over on the community. I mean, the number of the ones that are tested pot that are quarantined are very low. Yes the, the number of students who subsequently were positive in quarantine is very low under two percent. I mean, is that a good thing to keep kids since coming in school? As many as we can keep yeah. in school to not have a disruption in, in the continuity of their learning. I think, I think all a lot of discussions, we've lost so much over the year and a half of both being out of school and in the hybrid program, which was you know very hard on everybody. Um, I mean, the tricks keep people in school. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Uh, 802, Tracy Kenna. Good evening, President Smith, Dr. Sandlins, members of the board, mm -hmm. exec team, and that was a perfect segue, Mr. Smith, um, to talk about what, how we're going to try to make up some lost ground that we may have lost over the past year and a half of COVID closures. I also just wanted to send out a shout out. Right now, it's a very close field hockey game. Queen Anne's is up by one at the half. So. <laughs> All right, so I'm here today to talk about the local, <coughs> our local version of the Every Student Succeeds Act, the ESSA Act, the executive summary that I shared with you. Every year we are required to uh, present a plan to MSDE, that's a school improvement plan and a reporting plan that is based upon assessment data, generally state assessment data and internal data come up with, based on what the data says, goals for how we can improve our school system. So over the course of the years, back in 2002, we started with the Bridge to Excellence Plan, and this was a Maryland-based um, plan. Um, and then in 2015, we moved into the ESSA plan. This was a federal plan. Um, and then in 2019, we moved into a local ESSA plan. So again, we still must report every year to MSD. And then almost immediately, we were then right out into COVID. So we have now moved forward into a blueprint for Americans for Maryland's future. I'm sorry. Um, this, the blueprint does not have a reporting component. So we're currently in between reporting plans. We're still waiting for some additional guidance from MSDA about how they would like us to report our school improvement and our assessments moving forward. So this year we are to report our local ESSA plan as we have in the past and come up with a few focus areas to focus on this year. Dr. Kibler will go into more blueprint data and details in a couple weeks when he meets with you. So this year, 
our areas of focus, as I think you would all probably agree, we believe that our foundational skills are lacking with our youngest students, and the data does bear this out. So we decided we were going to focus on the K-2 literacy. So our goal is to increase the percentage of students reading on or above grade level by the end of this school year. And you can see that we are down 24% pre-COVID as compared to the end of last school year. So 2019 being the last full school year before the COVID closure. So that's a pretty significant gap. Our second graders have not been in school. Uh, they did half of kindergarten and then they haven't been in school since. So that has a, a uh, pretty heavy toll on childhood literacy. The virtual learning, yes, our teachers did all that they could, but teaching phonemic awareness virtually is very difficult. So we have some ground to make up there. We were able to assess this with the IRI data that we gathered last year and uh, the IRI data, IRI data we started this year. We're also gonna focus on the foundational skills in math for kindergarten through eight. Again, we want to increase the percentage of students that increase by one grade level by the end of the school year. And again, that is down about 25 percentage points when we compare pre-COVID to last year. How will we do it? So we're gonna be focusing on K-2 literacy by utilizing exact path and foundation to provide individualized instruction to support students in learning how to read grade level text. Students are going to be assessed multiple times a year via the exact path assessments that are built into the platform and through the Rigby running records as the individual reading inventories. In math, K to eight, schools are gonna utilize iReady or Math 180, it depends upon grade, because there are different programs for different age levels to support math students, both within the regular classroom and within the intervention classes. Additionally, students will be provided mathematics tutoring before and after school, and during the school day if that is feasible for the school. Again, students will be assessed multiple times through each platform. Moving forward from a strategic uh, planning standpoint, after we receive additional guidance from MSD, we will begin the process of crafting a new strategic plan for accountability, reporting, and school improvement. Questions about that? I know this is a statewide problem, a, pro a problem with you know, being behind because if you don't, and our foundations aren't there for these younger kids, and if it's not there and they stay behind, they'll never, I don't mm -hmm. feel, I feel it'll be a tough time to get caught up, especially the ones that need to get caught up, won't they? Will we space our numbers on two years ago and not just say what the state's doing? Because I just find that the whole, you know, I think the whole tide's going to go down. I don't want to make sure that we're trying to stay where we should be if we hadn't had COVID. It's going to be a tough challenge, but to yes. really not just sit there and say, yeah, we're doing 2% or 5% better than anybody else. That's great. But the problem is the, the bars gets too low. Yes, we are trying to compare our current in-person learning with our previous in-person learning. Okay. So we are trying to make gains upon what we did before we went out for the COVID closure. That is going to be a tough climb, yeah. but that is how we've been looking at the data. You, do you think this, I mean, it's not, it's not an easy or quick fix. Yeah. I think in a year or two, we can get this back up to... I hope so. I don't know if I can guarantee that tonight, but yeah. yes, I, that, that should be our goal. It's a tough situation, but yeah. we're definitely putting using our ESSER funds um, to put in a lot of additional support systems for our students through tutoring, um, even before school, many, many programs after school, some push and interventions during school. Uh, and then we're even right now gearing up for the summer. And what is our summer going to look like? Exhausting enough as it sounds, but um, making sure like last year, we had a very robust summer opportunity for students and making sure we can mirror that opportunity. Um, so we really are putting every effort into it and we would hope that we can get back to where our numbers were um, pre-COVID. I mean, I don't, the extension span of some of these children that are in the K to, to I mean, we can have after school, we can have, you know, summer, but right. they, they, you know, there's they, well, that's where only they, so much time they can. That's where the intervention piece of it, the push in during the school day to really focus on and using those running records, um, which is really a diagnostic tool for us to see where each student is individually. And it, it's almost like creating an individual plan for every single student, which is exhausting, but it's what we really need to do. Um, you're right. Our, our, our littles don't have the foundational skills on which to build on. So it's going to be harder for them. They can't necessarily catch up because they, 
they have to be ready with those foundational skills before they can build on them. So um, teachers are and support staff are working very hard. Um, we have parent conferences coming up and I know that that's gonna help to communicate with our parents and make sure that we're providing all the supports possible. And I also to the parents and tell them what they, you know, what, what we're they, trying to do mm -hmm. and what they need to do because right, what they can do I mean, we're, you well. know, six hours a day is great, but there's, you know, other times they need just to reinforce what's being taught in the schools. I was also just going to say we're also striving for variety. That way, the little the littles are don't become bored with something right. you know a little too rote. So we are trying to uh, change things up throughout their day and after school. That way, it, it always feels a little new to them. I mean, to me, it's just in normal times, it's a challenge. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you add a year and a half of mm -hmm. abnormal, even longer, maybe. It just, you know, it, it just, I just hope we don't see long-term effects, which I know we will some, but. Well, I hope I'm speaking out of turn by saying, regardless of what MSD eventually comes out and asks us to do, I think we're gonna continue to focus on our pre-COVID data mm -hmm. to, to try to get us back up to speed to that level, because we were a very highly performing right. district. Yeah. And the schools, each school has completed their school improvement plan, and every principal has completed their SLO, which is their student learning objective. So they have a target there, and they're all focused on this kind of catch up, if you might say, or providing those additional supports for students um, to get back to where we were. And, and, and an educational part to the parents, too, to know that, you know that they need to be a big partner in this to help us because we can supply a lot of things, but you know, they, they, they're going to almost play a bigger role than they've ever had in their lives mm -hmm. to, to, to get over this challenge. Yes. Exactly. Thank you. Yeah. Any other board members? Thank you, no, thank you. You're welcome. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too, Ms. Harper. Mm -hmm. Sorry. 803 transfer notice chain. Good evening again. Tonight I bring before you transfer notice. The transfer notice is a, as of October 21. In summary, in two different categories, mid-level administration, we found the need to transfer 3,000 from other charges to contracted services to cover the cost of the school funds online accounting software by building. Then the next one is in special education. The salaries to contracted services of 275,000. This is for the speech and occupational therapists. Instead of salaries, they have been contracted out for this year. And that's the same problem we face most yeah. years, Correct. not finding quality, not finding people to hire, so then we have to contract in mm -hmm. there. There's such a shortage in, yes. Mm -hmm. Now that we've had this over there, so it's just, okay. Bottom line, we're in budget. It's just going from one to the other. It's just paid. correct. It's, it's within that category itself, whether it's special ed or mid-level. It's transferring within that specific category. Okay. Stay on for a couple more. Oh, you're right here. Just keep on. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> monthly unrestricted report. All right. So um, attached is your monthly unrestricted report for October. You can see the expenditure status summary report by category in addition to the breakout by account. The negatives that you see in some of those categories are cleared up from the transfer request and the transfer notice that I'm presenting tonight. I'm looking on the right one. That, that's under the health service and stuff like that. Uh, 08 or something. Um, correct. There was, um, under the health services one, there was a, a salary um, a adjustment there as well as annual leave payout. The 3,651 for contracted services. I'm, I'm gonna have to research that one. That one is for, con um, catastrophe related um, student health and I just want to make sure that that um, goes here under uh, student personnel or health I mean under health if not I'll transfer it to another category on our uh, student transportation is fuel starting to hit us hard yes and we I know if it keeps going up we're gonna be in a bigger problem than we are now but you know it's gone up a dollar what dollar and quarter over the last six months to a year and well, that affects us directly. There is a cost escalator involved with that. 
So under student trans under student transportation, I see it's 96% of that budget has already been, is it just allocated? It is allocated, let's correct, between encumbrances for salaries and then as well as under contracted services that includes our LLCs as well in that Okay, number. thank you. So there's a very, there's very limited, okay, right. Yes, it is gonna be tight this year in transportation. <sighs> Fuel. Yeah. The fuel for our, have we pre-purchased fuel for our buildings and propane and gas? Yes, we have. Uh, have fuel oil. As, that has gone up also, right, as you can imagine. Um, so uh, including running our buildings an extra two hours in the morning and two hours in the evening for the air exchange. I mean, I've definitely, you probably have too, Jane, definitely seen the uh, electric bills increase 25% um, or so, if not more. Now, can we use ESNER funds because we're doing more air circulation because of COVID? Would that be something that could uh, be pulled out of that money because, you know. We, we could potentially, yes. If we had a, I mean, some of that could be used. If we're running Maybe. circulating air, what, mm -hmm. instead of two times, we're doing it three times a day or something. And I know you're running them longer. And it, it would definitely qualify. Okay. But don't we have, don't we have reserves on the energy saving side of that with the solar panels and? Yeah, so we have the solar panels, which you know is at a cheaper rate, and then we also belong to ESMIC okay. um, Energy Trust, um, which we we're able to lock in okay. blocks of electric at a cheaper rate. But it's still, like I said, we're running the systems four hours extra each day where we weren't doing that before. So you know, times 180 days, it's it's okay. you can really see the difference. And then pray for a mild winter. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Well, that as we get into the winter months, we're circulating cold air to have to warm it up. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Whatever you bring in, you got to bring it out and get it up to temperature. Good news. Okay. okay. And then, if my memory serves me correct, the next one is the ESSER 2 breakdown. Okay. We'll bring ESSER 3 in, in December. So this is what's been uh, spent year to date is the 1.4 million. Available is 1.5. It has been budgeted. As, um, there's an amendment that was um, submitted to MSDE and approved, and you can see the description of the change on the right hand side. This, this has been approved uh, by MSDE. Yes, correct. Okay. And then when then Ezra. Three is the next round. Mm -hmm. That's not. That's your report later on. Uh, correct. We'll we'll start in December. I believe tonight we're going to uh, start seeing some S or three requests come through as far as the um, I, I um, math or I ready programs pair deck. Okay. Like what we just talked about earlier with um, Ms. Kenna, can some of that like money that we're using for tutoring and after school programs that can be S or money too, right? Because of COVID. Right. I, I'm, I'm not sure if, if we want to um, put it towards, but definitely would qualify for ESSER. But we have gotten um, from the state as far as supplemental aid and uh, let's see, for grades, I'm trying to think, um, the upper grade levels, 730000 just for this one year alone okay. for the supplemental tutoring funds. And then as well as uh, TSI, which is for the, the younger group of 130. So we're, that's covered some most of that. Yes, so that that will cover it. So um, ESSER is, is free to identify the other needs. There has been uh, needs that are addressed. The executive team reviews them um, at least monthly because there's requests that pop up all the time. Uh, the needs are changing, and so we'll adjust accordingly. Okay. Other questions? Good. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I had a time to look over our human resource uh, buds uh, substitute report, Dr. Salins. Yes, Mr. Smith. I, I take it we're into action items now, Mr. Smith. Mm -hmm. Mr. Smith, may I make a motion to accept the human resources bus substitute bus driver report as presented in closed session? Second. A motion is second. Uh -huh. Any questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have a 3 0. Okay. Next one is Amy Smith. Air deck subscription. Oh, yeah. That's probably. <laughs> Thanks. I don't know. I'm actually Pear 
Nick and Miss Smith is not ready. I'm sorry, Tracy, I'm sorry. That's okay. I'm one ahead of them. So, I have an action item for uh, use of ESSER 3 funds for a Pear Deck premium subscription. Pear Deck is a program that uh, integrates seamlessly with our learning management system, Schoology. It allows teachers to create interactive slideshow presentations in Google Slides that they can then control on the students' laptops, and it provides instantaneous formative assessment. Um, this was something that the teachers and the principals requested in their SR3. They had asked for this for a one-year subscription. After speaking with a couple different reps from Pear Deck, I was able to get that into an 18-month subscription for the entire district, not just for the elementary schools. Mr. Smith, point of information. I, I know it's our normal protocol to go ahead and make a motion and have our discussion. Mm -hmm. um, and then after discussion, then have our vote. If you wouldn't mind, just bear me a little indulgence here to ask questions previously, if you don't mind. Fine. Okay. Um, uh, since we have not gotten into the uh, ESSER 3 funds yet, and I'm going to ask that to Ms. Towers, I apologize. Um, is, is it prudent to go ahead and start spending this money? Yes, it has been approved by MSDE. Okay. So even though we don't have it yet, we are allowed to go ahead and budget for it. Well, um, we actually received the NOGA uh, week before last. So it's a notice of uh, the grant award. So we're able to spend it from that. Um, okay, thank notification you. Notification from MSDE. Okay. I just want to make sure I don't want to spend money where we're not allowed and no, don't have and. And I think on a, it says action is 12:30. It starts right, so it won't be starting until December anyway. Yes, this would be the spring semester and then the entire following. We're, we're just authorizing the contractor. 22 CD. to end 23. Right. It says on here June 30th to 2023. Yeah, the end of that school year. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. School year. Oh. Yeah, so oh we get gosh. this coming like, spring semester right. and then so all like next school year. Yeah. When we got the original request, it was just for a year, just for elementary schools. And then the negotiations, we were able to get 18 months for the whole district for what we budgeted for. And so we need this month to basically get it set up in the systems to link the Schoology so that the staff can be fired up and ready to go after the Christmas break and the new year. So. That's fabulous. So, so it could start January of next year. Run to just once, one half a year, and then the following whole year. Yes, yes sir. Yeah, that's great. And everything the teachers create in Pear Deck remains their property. So anything they create over the spring semester, they may certainly utilize in future yeah. years. Okay. All right, well, Mr. Smith. Then may I please make the motion to approve the purchase of Pear Deck, the district-wide uh, access. Uh, fiscal impact dollar amount of $37,247.68, budget source ESSER 3 funds. Second. Your second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Ayes have it, 3-0. Okay, Dr. Hamilton, would you? Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Also, yes, um, board members, um, as part of your... I should have done that during the HR report. I apologize that during your action item for human resources, um, report. Uh, we actually have Dr. Sell here this evening. Dr. Sell is, um, uh, with your approval, be, well, you just approved it, yes. so it's official now. Um, it will be officially the new assistant principal at Centerville Middle School, and we're really happy to have him come here. He's coming from Delaware with um, a, a variety of experiences, and we'll be able to literally hit the floor running, and um, he'll actually be starting tomorrow. So really excited. I'd like to kind of get up and introduce him, you know, have himself introduce and just congratulate him. Maybe Lynette can get a picture um, and so that we can share it out with everyone. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Very, very impressive career you've had. <laughs> We're going to do the picture. <laughs> I didn't know. We had met, so I apologize. I didn't know. You know, very nice to meet you. Glad to bring you on board. Yeah, and you get to Sorry. sit through a very boring video. Come on. <laughs> Welcome, thank you. I've sat through many, many videos. Thank you. I remember walking.
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Smith, Dr. Salins, board members and executives team. For the record, I'm Amy Smith, supervisor K-12 mathematics and gifted and talented. I am bringing to you the contract for single text adoption for kindergarten through second grade of iReady classroom and online support. This contract is really bringing in the needed support for our elementary. Last year, we went through the book adoption process and we brought in grades three through five. So now with SR3 funds, we have the ability to bring in and finish off our elementary program so that all students, one, have a working textbook, teachers have appropriate supports and resources. It will also help support some of those learning gaps because of the, the different trajectories that the program has built in as well as the resources that are built into the instructional tools for teachers to use. It is a six-year contract um, with iReady in order to come in so it, it'll make the kids be able to flow their program all the way through their elementary school cycle and it is for $227,653.40. I would have just under action, it says 22 to 23 school years. That just, you said it's a six year contract? It is a six year contract. So it will start our school year off in the fall, but in order to get the pricing before it changes, and now that we have the ESSER grants ready after Dr. Salins and the exec team reviewed, they felt this was the best timing to put it through. That way it also allows us to get the curriculum written and ready for implementation in the fall. And the 227 is a six, it's basically. It, it's six years, so it'll go from 22, 23, and six years out. That's so 35,000 a year, whatever it yes. will take to be. And then after the six years, just like with um, the three to five that we talked about last year, if, as we want, if we want to renew year to year, we can do that. But this will allow us a larger quantity of time for progression and teachers to be able to embrace and students to get the support they need at a much um, better value financially. Jane, we, we, we're going to spend this ASNA 3 money on a six-year contract. I'm sure there's a time limit of when ASNA 3 money's got to be spent probably quicker than six years. Right. It, as long as there's a uh, signed contract and agreement for that time frame, then that is acceptable. And we can, I, I don't know, and you're the financial expert, we can hold it and pay it on a yearly or if something goes wrong, there'd be a way to protect um, both sides. No, what we'll have to do um, is pay it up front mm -hmm. and then we get reimbursed the following month. We put it in as a request to get reimbursed for that amount. But, but Esner... Pay for the full 229000 I believe it was. That okay, but, but Esner's going to have, we're going to have to use Esner funds by a certain date, three, aren't we? Or don't we? Will that go for six years? No, uh, Esner three is extended out till uh, 24. So we'll pay for it this this month. Uh, we'll encumber the funds this month. So it's setting the, so it's setting the money aside this month for it. For the full contract, we're, it's six... It's right. getting paid now. We're going to pay it now, and then the state's going to reimburse us for it. And we're going to pay the full amount now. So we're going to pay for the six years, but we won't get the services until year one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's but but we have a signed contract and it's their obligation to fulfill that contract for I mean six they're gonna years. have our complete money for a six year contract. Yes. And we feel confident that's not a problem. Not no, we we've, we've done that with other ones. With other definitely on other case. Even the one you just approved, which was really a year and a half, is the same concept. It's just that this one sounds a little bit more robust because it's six years. Well and, and the grades three through five, it was it's a six year contract. Right. So we're in year one of that implementation. We have five more years 
that we have the program guaranteed. It's paid for. Not another cent goes for grades three through five. So what she's trying to say is she doesn't need any more money for anything as it relates to elementary school. <laughs> At the elementary. Six years. <laughs> For math. For math. I guess yeah, I'm, I'm looking at it a different way. I'm looking at like a business person that says, you're going to put a roof on my house every fifth year, six year. I'm giving you all the money now. I just want to make sure you're around in six years. Yeah. That's that, that's the only thing. I, we feel confident we're all right there. This this company has been around for, I, I was just at their training, and this is year 22, 24 okay. with them. Um, they just brought in a, yet another tier to their <laughs> intervention programs. I, I don't believe Curriculum Associates are going anywhere okay yeah. I, I i i don't know enough Got about a good it reputation they, they have a have phenomenal a reputation, reputation. Yeah. in this day and age everybody's trying to get something out of somebody yeah and this program what it does also offer not only for student support but literally as students go through the program it almost creates an individual learning plan for every student from the time they enter and so teachers get so much feedback as far as how they can group students to provide them the right supports at the exact time that it is needed. Okay. So, may I, uh, Ms. Smith, what is the name of the company? The company is Curriculum Associates. It is their iReady classroom and pathway programs. So maybe next time um, on here, put Curriculum Associates, that's who we're having the contract with, rather than just the product that we're purchasing. Okay. That way, it, when we make the motion, it's who we're having, who we're doing business with. Yeah. Well, in I, I understand that, but it's not on the yellow sheet. People may only just look at the yellow sheet and not see that it says. So may I make a motion, Mr. Smith, to approve the contract with Curriculum Associates to purchase the iReady Classroom Mathematics textbook review for grades kindergarten one, two, elementary implementation for a fiscal impact dollar amount of $227,653.40, a budget source S or three funds. Second. I have a motion a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it, 3-0. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Josh Combs associate. We have a thing for cable switches. It probably sounds great, but. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, board members. Dr. Salins, President Smith, executive team. For the record, my name is Josh Combs. I am the supervisor of technology. Uh, requesting here today to request purchase approval for a data domain device and two fiber switches. In layman's terms, two uh, core switches that go to our data center to provide redundancy and high end speed to all of our core servers. They're about eight years old now, so we're kind of due to upgrade those, replace those. Uh, the data domain device is basically, you think of it as a big hard drive that we want to add to our backup solution. Therefore, things like I can add backup more servers as we keep progressing, we have to add more and more virtual servers as we go along. I like to back those up. And some of our core servers, like our file and print, we can back up longer. So instead of maybe doing a backup scheme for two weeks, we can go 30 days or 40 days on a single server by adding more hard drive capacity to that, our backup solution. Mr. Combs, who are we purchasing this through? I see, I see that it's an Data intergovernmental co-op purchasing agent, but what's yes, the name? Yes, um, it's being purchased the through the MEET contract. The name of the company? Data Networks. Data Networks. Yes, that's the name of the company. Okay. Data Networks Incorporated. Thank you. Uh, it's a Maryland company. Moon Valley, it says. It's a Dell, it's a Dell product. The reseller is Data Networks. So we're buying this through a co-op so we didn't have to have the three bids on it. Right. Okay. Um, the meet contract is basically an RFP process that's already done through the University of Maryland that all the counties are part of, so you okay. kind of get to piggyback off those contracts. Mr. Smith, may I make a motion to approve the contract with Data Networks Incorporated for the purchase of a data domain uh, 3300 appliance and two fiber channel switches Fiscal impact dollar amount of forty thousand one hundred forty-one dollars. The FY twenty from the budget source of FY twenty twenty-two unrestricted capital outlay. Budget second. Uh, motion second. All those in favor say aye. 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 
question while you're here. Yes. We got we got updated power uh, storage coming from Kent County that came over from uh, Baltimore to have more uh, oh, the internet bandwidth. bandwidth. Yeah, we went from one gig to uh, two gigs. Are we all straight with that now? Yes. So it's up and running, done, yes. had it. Gotcha. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to see you, Josh. Thank you. Cafeteria tables, Carl. President Smith, members of the board, Dr. Salins. I am Carla Pullen, facilities planner, Queen Anne's County Public Schools. The first item I have for you this evening is an approval for the purchase of new cafeteria tables for Bayside Elementary School. This is utilizing a cooperative purchasing agreement. The contract is with Duran, and we are looking at a quantity of 23 new tables for that school. It will be our standard, the new standard specification that we have, which is a rectangular table with 12 12 stools, which is easier for cleaning and fold up for the custodial crew. The fiscal impact is $56,602.08, and this is budgeted in ESSER 2. Oh, question real quickly, under the ESSER 2 funds, Ms. Towers, we have that, mm -hmm. we still have that amount yes. available to use, and this is for social distancing. It's certainly helpful for social distancing okay. as well as for cleaning and sanitizing. Okay. So Mr. Smith, may I make the motion to approve the purchase of 23 new cafeteria tables for Bayside Elementary School with uh, the company at Doron. Fiscal impact dollar amount of $56,602.08, a budget source ESSER 2 funds. Second. Uh, motion is second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 aye seven, three, oh. Yeah. Just a question of thing. What do we, yes. I know the old tables are shot. What do we do with them? In some cases, some of them will still be usable. Mm -hmm. And therefore, during our social distancing, we may continue to keep some of those working. Those that are beyond repair or have been welded at this point, I think are probably better that we just right. get rid of those. What, what we're finding is that sometime when they made the list prior to school starting, mm -hmm. some of the principals are now saying, hey, I, I thought this would work, but it's not quite working the way I thought it would work once the kids got in here. So, you know, there has been a change up of different needs in different areas. But we will be able to utilize some of the tables for extra. Arts? True. Right. So in that vein, sir, uh, the next contract, may I make a motion to approve a contract with Duran for the purchase of new uh, 12 new cafeteria tables for Southersville Elementary School, fiscal impact dollar amount of $29,858.52, budget source ESSER 2 funds. Second. A motion is second. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it three up. Thank I you. notice all this stuff is 16 weeks. At least 16 weeks. So we have, so. I mean, I'm sure I know we've talked about roofs and everything else. I guess everything just supply chain is just crazy. It is, especially furniture, even in the residential market. It's very difficult to get furniture right now. The next item that I have for you is the PA replacement at Centerville Elementary School. This is a approval of a contract with HP Electronics. We are utilizing a cooperative purchasing contract and we will be installing new head end console speakers and the wiring to replace that PA system. It was installed in 2002, so it's at the end of its useful life. It is difficult to get parts for that now. We wanna make sure that we keep that for a safety aspect uh, up to date. Fiscal impact is $46,349.69. This is from aging school funds from the state of Maryland. We do not have a matching source with this. This is money directly from the state. Sounds like a winner. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Can we, I see we're, we're a little bit under, can we use that for like the system we had at Queen Anne's High School to pay for a little bit of it too? This one is specific to, you apply for a specific project and you're awarded that amount. We have up to $50,000 to use about every year and we try to okay. do something that's okay. security okay. related. Okay. So Mr. Smith, may I make the motion to approve the contract with HP Electronics? for the purchase of a replacement PA system at the Centerville Elementary School. Fiscal impact dollar amount of $46,349.69. 
budget source FY 2022 aging school program funds. Second. <clears throat> Motion second. All those in here say aye. 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 Ayes have it 3-0. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Lighting. Oh. I, I, I will her. stay I'll for, yes, I will stay for questions, but I believe Mr. Pender is going <laughs> to. Handle Evening, this. President uh, Smith, Dr. Salem's board members, uh, Sid Pender, Chief Operating Officer. Um, we, before you, have a um, proposal from Lighting Maintenance Incorporated to remove the existing uh, HID pole light fixtures um, at Ken Allen Elementary School, Mattapique Elementary School, and Mattapique Middle School. Um, and replace those with LED. Um, and there is a Delmarva Power rebate program that goes along with this. Um, the uh, company will take care of all the paperwork handling that. Uh, just to kind of give you an example to help offset the cost, um, Kennard Elementary School is about $4,000 rebate we got. And I believe Queen Anne's High School is around 5,000. Once we do the new uh, LED lights, it won't require us to change them all the time um, and, and maintenance being involved in it. If you want to look at a prime example, go to Kennard Elementary School or uh, Queen Anne's where we did it. And it uh, you can <laughs> you can actually see in front of you now. Um, it's, it's a safety issue, and it, it worked out very well. Um, seeking approval for our, the um, $33,005.60 uh, um, out of the capital outlay. Any questions or? Yeah, so, uh, Ms. Towers, we have that available in the budget too for this. Um, I'll bring it before under item 10, uh, 13 under transfer request. Okay. Yes. And the rebate won't be enough to cover the entire cost. No, I would imagine. Half? 10 to 12,000 dollars. Or Mr. Smith, may I make a motion to approve the contract with Lighting Maintenance Incorporated um, to remove existing HID pole light fixtures and install LED area parking lot lights for Kennell Elementary School, Mattapique Elementary School, and Mattapique Middle School. Fiscal impact dollar amount of $33,005.60. Budget source FY22 operating budget. <coughs> second. A motion to second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it three. Oh. And this will be done not during school hours or I mean. No, it, it'll be done during the evenings because they also have to set up the, the light pattern and the candles. Okay, so it have to be set up at yep. night time anyway. Yep. Next on there is a fire alarm. Yes, um, seeking approval of a contract with Johnson Controls to provide annual inspections of the fire alarm systems um, in compliance with the Statement of Work in the National Fire Association for all Queen Anne's County Public School buildings. Um, in the past, we have had our nine maintenance um, technicians that we have. They actually come in after school hours or on the weekends. We walk a building. It takes a, literally about 10 days because you have to walk every single room and look at the strobe lights, the sound, document all that. Um, the problem I'm running into is when I have nine of them doing it during the evening, guess what? I got nobody during the daytime. Um, and all of the inspections that they keep uh, asking us to do along with the security cameras and all, we simply just don't have the time. Um, and you know manpower to do that so i'm uh, seeking approval tonight it's actually a um, three-year contract uh, the first year will be for twenty nine thousand nine hundred eighty nine dollars um, and that would come out of the fy 22 operating budget so uh, we normally have three bids to do this this is under the um, source well cooperative purchasing agreement uh zero three one five one seven okay so we're in we're in compliance there. Yes. And probably it gives us a layer of protection too because we got somebody else not the fox watching the hen house. I mean you got an outside contract right. looking at something when you're I'm not your guy. Oh yeah, doing no, it's it, but they are seeing the same thing every day, so you got a, a new set of eyes coming in there. I mean you got yeah, and that and it just poor Jim O'Donnell just you know, he spends days and days and days getting all the paperwork together and you know, and especially with something with life safety like that, you really want to have it documented. Will this um, provide, they'll provide documentation to the fire marshal yep. so that we'll be in compliance with that? We'll have all that. the reports. Yes, ma'am. So, Mr. Smith, may I make the motion to approve the contract with Johnson Control 
schools to provide annual fire alarm systems inspections on all of our schools. Fiscal impact dollar amount of $29,989 per year for a three-year contract. Budget sources FY 2022 operating budget for this first year. Second. A motion is second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. 3-0. The next item that I have, uh, board members, is the um, seeking approval of a um, allowing Northern County uh, Exchange, uh, specifically uh, Ashton Cannon, to purchase a new bus next school year. Um, her bus will be uh, 15 years, which is the state law, the longest you can have it. Um, so seeking approval for her to purchase um, and replace bus 10108. Um, again, that goes out of service August 26th. 7th 2022 and there is a, a long line now for manufacturing buses that will come with a different PVA of course um, so seeking approval for that tonight but that won't impact us until next budget that's correct okay mr. Smith may I make the motion to allow the Northern County Exchange LLC and Ashton Cannon to purchase a new bus to replace an existing 15-year bus that will be going out of service on August 27, 2022, bus number 10108. Fiscal impact dollar amount of nothing and no budget source needed. Second. Motion is second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. 3-0. Jane, you're back up. <laughs> Trying to make that 26 minutes, Mr. Smith. <laughs> Working. <laughs> Um, good evening again. Tonight we bring before you the proposed FY 22-23 budget calendar for your review, um, input, comments. Um, I'll go date by date. On October 6th, the CIP was submitted and approved by the school board. On October 29th, last Friday, budget request forms were issued to all departments and schools. On November 3rd, the proposed is the board approves the budget calendar with input on November 19th. The budget request forms from the department and schools are gonna be due to the finance office. On December 1st, the budget requests are gonna be presented to the budget committee, and that's an all day session. On December 6th, as well, another session. On December 9th, review and prioritize the budget requests. On December 17th, the budget roundtable meeting. And then uh, in January, January 12th, the first budget work session, provide an update of the governor's proposed budget. Take a look at the FY23 um, state aid as it is um, gonna roll out the career ladder, CTE, full day pre-K. So we can dive into those numbers on the 19th is another budget work session on February 16th, a budget work session. March 2nd, the superintendent's proposed budget will be presented for board vote. And then in April to present, hopefully uh, to the commissioners for the FY23 budget. I don't have a calendar in front of me. What's January the 6th? What day I fall on? January 6th is a, you 6th, January 6th. January 12th, January I'm sorry. 12th is a Wednesday. Wednesday. So can, that's a regular scheduled work session. No, it is an extra one. It's that's an extra, extra yeah. So that, could be, that could be between our board meeting and a work session. Yes. Correct. 19th but is? Is a regular board is a regular session. Third, it's the third week, okay. which right, we a, always use for budget anyway. The 16th? Is a, is a, what I don't see on here is February 9th. We always had two meetings two budget work sessions. We have our regular meeting on the second and then that second and the third week we use for budget if it was necessary. The tentative one is scheduled for the ninth. It's scheduled so the for the ninth. Yeah. It says tentative. If it's yeah. tentative? Yes. Yeah, so okay. Because so it's, it. 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 it's not on here, that's why I ask. Yeah. So February 9th is tentative? We can add that. Of course. Thank you. Just in case we need it. Sure. Yes. Absolutely. I mean, it, we definitely I just need the, the members calendar. need to put we it in their schedules. As Correct. Sure. If, we Correct. Don't have, if yeah. somebody's not here, they can talk to Jane. We or norm Sam's I mean, we normally had three in January and three in February. Yeah, and I, I do think that it, it is on your original calendar for a board work okay. session, but it's just not on this particular budget calendar, but we can add, we'll update that. Okay, yeah, definitely. Good. So you'll make those changes. Mm -hmm. We'll have, we're gonna vote 
on it, and I don't think there's any problem here. We, you know, we have one new member coming on at some point, and then Helen will have to be back. But you know, there's, there's sure. a regular meeting, so Wednesday's usually so do you, in the spring. Is it okay then? Go ahead and make the motion to accept the budget calendar for 2022. I would 20, say we make the motion, and if it has to be amended at some later date, we can't always do that. But we can't amend. We can't amend that. It's not a problem. But accept it now. Yes, I, okay, I have sir, any problem. I make no, a motion to. I'd rather know what I'm doing. Sure. As much as possible. I make a motion to accept the FY 22-23 proposed budget calendar. Second. And, you could, and that's and that's amendment. with the change or not? That's with it putting in the February 9th. Correct. Yes. Right. Okay. Just I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Three zero. The next item that we bring before you tonight is the approval of the FY21 audited financial statements as presented this evening. That was that. Right. That's what you presented to us earlier in the evening. Mm -hmm. Correct. Do we have any questions on that? Nope. <clears throat> Sir, may I make a motion to accept the independent audit report for FY21 is presented by the TGM group. Second. A motion is second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Three, yeah. I promise the last item here um, tonight. <laughs> we love talking to you, Jane. Come on, <laughs> <Good roll. laughs> um, Is the transfer request for um, ending October 21st. Now, uh, the transfer request is gonna be a budget amendment number two for the um, unrestricted budget. Since the adoption of the, of the budget, we have a couple different categories that, that needs um, funding. And the first one would be administration. We had three uh, people resign with annual leave payouts per their negotiated agreements. So we're asking for a 26,933 in administration. And that is going to become um, from fixed charges. There's some uh, savings identified under fixed charges. So we'll roll that from category 12 up to category one. The next one, student services. Student services, we need to um, account for leave payouts and a position reclassification of 42,000. Special education, an item of note here, under um, non-public, they went from 11 to 10, so there was 43,000 savings, so we're gonna go ahead and use that savings and transfer into student health. The next one is maintenance. Uh, there's identified savings under fixed charges that we need for salary for annual leave payouts, as well as uh, what was brought before you this evening with Johnson Control of the 29,000 and, and change to bring into the maintenance account of 45,000. And then in capital outlay, this is gonna be the reclassification of capital expenditures to bring in, and that's under category 15 of 1.4, and that will be from, as we talked tonight about the a fund balance of 4.9, this would actually um, take from that 4.9. This is reviewing, and because we've been talking about this, reviewing our capital outlay expenditures that we have, we've discussed with the commissioners too about making sure we're in compliance on all areas. Correct. And we've Come discussed on. that with the commissioners and going to work that out as far as our, it could be a change in next year's capital budget. Uh, correct. To, to align with Comar's requirements that they have for us now. Mr. Smith, may I make a motion um, to approve the transfer request with budget amendment number two for FY 2022 to be sent over to the county commissioners? Second. Motion is second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank we you. send that over. We, I just put a little hand note if you need me to that you know we don't have our full capital budget this year. That we want to make sure everybody is still aware of that. Yes. Thank you, Jane. Thank you. Do we have anybody signed up for public comment? No. Our next work session will be November the 17th. And our first meeting in December will be December the 1st for our regular next board meeting. Do I have any other things for the calls? I have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Three.